Hi, I'm Joe Walensky, and I'm the Program Manager for ConveyUX, and that's been Seattle's annual user experience conference for the past seven years, and we're coming up to our eighth year, and we're going to be, again, hosting the event March 3rd, 4th, and 5th, produced by Blink. It's in downtown Seattle at the uh, West in Seattle, and I have the honor and fun of talking to all of our many speakers that are going to be at the conference, and today I'm speaking with Cora Cole. So, hello, Cora. How are you? Doing good, Joe. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm talking from Blink's Seattle headquarters office. Where are you talking to us from? I am in Detroit. Uh, I am at the huge Inc. office here in Detroit. Uh, we're based in Brooklyn, uh, but again, I work out of the Detroit office, so I'm tucked away in one of the back offices here. Well, I'm glad we were able to co connect up. I, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think you might be the first person from the D Detroit area to be a speaker, so we're glad to be able to have that regional perspective uh, at the conference. And uh, uh, so a uh, good place to, to start would be just talking a little bit about your background and the types of things that you do at HUGE. Sure. Um, so I am um, an Associate Experience Director here at HUGE. I have come to HUGE by way of um, many different industries. Um, I've been on the agency side, but also uh, internally on the, on the business side as well. Worked in automotive, healthcare, consumer packaged goods. It kind of runs the gamut. Um, and I find myself here at HUGE now um, running user experience for this office um, and you know, working across clients and then also interfacing with our other offices as well. Um, I have my uh, background and experience and probably where I started. It, I like to think of myself as a bit of a purist, maybe, if you could call yourself that in user experience. Um, but I, I lean heavily towards um, information architecture and research and very like um, kind of the boring part of it, some might say. But those are the things that are exciting to me. And uh, how are things set up at, at HUGE? You mentioned that uh, there's the, uh, that's, uh, the main uh, headquarters is in Brooklyn. Uh, how are things set up and what types of projects do you get involved in? So we have uh, 1,300 team members across 13 offices, I think is our count right now. Um, again, based in Brooklyn, we're here in Detroit, but we have offices all around the world. Um, Singapore, we have offices in Bogota, we have offices in London, like everywhere. I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss some places. So I'll just give you those as examples. Um, but we're all over the place. Um, we have, so as far as user experience is concerned, for instance, there are UI designers, there is a creative, uh, there's an entire creative team, but there's also an experience design team. That's kind of what Hughes has been based on, has been experience design and, and um, user-centric experiences and you know we've grown since then and started to work on other types of clients for instance here in the Detroit office um, uh, we have a primary focus on automated sorry automotive integrated work which is a bit different than your typical user experience work of course but we have other clients also in this office that aren't necessarily our primary where we get to work on those types of experiences as well um, and then it's nice having such a, um, a wide network of offices to share work between because we'll get um, ideas and examples from other projects. And a lot of times we'll get to work on those other projects as well. Well, I'm, I'm sure you always have a lot of uh, things going on, keeping you busy, but is there uh, anything uh, part in particular that uh, you've just been thinking about, new ideas uh, that you're considering? Yeah, I think something that's been on my mind a lot lately. Um, so we just finished, we just launched a redesigned site for a regional tire company here in the area. And in working on it, it became obvious to me, and I started to put it together with some of my past work as well, that these types of purchases are like grudge purchases, like tires, um, 
in in the CPG space, you know, having to sell diapers, for instance, like these are not things you necessarily want to buy. It's not like makeup or clothes or shoes, like those things people have no, or um, they have fewer objections to buying, right? Price might be an object, uh, an objective, uh, sorry, objection. Um, but when it comes to like tires or diapers or these sorts of things that people don't want to buy, but just have to, it's just part of adulthood, something that you have to do. How do you design for those grudge purchases, right? So you make them as delightful and as seamless and as um, frictionless as possible. So you still get the job done without leaving them with a negative sentiment for the business. And it's, I think it's a tricky proposition but one that that's starting to sort of, you know, over my past uh, role, starting to kind of weave itself together now, thinking more about that. Well, I'm glad you brought this up because uh, it's something that I'd never really thought about, but it, it's obviously something that uh, is a, uh, a reality in, in all kinds of things that we purchase on a regular basis. So it's yeah. interesting to hear your thoughts about that. Mm -hmm. um, I want to uh, talk about the session that you're going to be presenting, and um, you're going to be helping out in an area of the conference where we're trying to uh, make sure that we get out messages about gaps in inclusion in tech and in, in UX, and I, I think your presentation is something that um, is going to be uh, a uh, good food for thought for our attendees. The title is Designing Experiences for Underserved and Gentrified Communities. So why don't you talk a little bit about how you came around to the idea for this talk? Yeah. So as we mentioned before, I'm here in Detroit and I have, I mean, I'm born and raised here. This is my home. I love it. I always have. Um, but Detroit, Detroit's in an odd position right now where um, it is, experiencing a resurgence, especially like in the downtown and midtown areas, and you're seeing more businesses, restaurants, retail, employers, jobs are coming, and that's great. Um, but a lot of times it's coming at the expense of the people who have been here all along. And I started to think about, um, I, I've heard a lot of stories firsthand outside of my job where um, people who live like in the neighborhoods, they either feel left behind or they feel like they're not necessarily afforded the same um, opportunities or the same experiences when they go to say conduct business at the city that maybe some newcomers are getting. So um, I've, I've had that kind of in the back of my mind and then a few of the projects I've been on recently, um, uh, accessibility has been tantamount as part of the work, where it's always a consideration, but for these last two in particular, it's been very important, and we've been talking about it more and more. And I started to weave together the pieces. They are for audiences that don't necessarily always get the um, consideration or recognition, and when they don't, the impact is almost greater to them than it would be for the majority. It's almost like the 80-20 rule sometimes fails us. And I know that, you know, we're taught the 80-20 rule, if you can get that 80% covered, then, then you're, you're doing pretty good. And, then, and it's true, but that other 20%, what happens now when we overlook them or when they're not served at all, what is the impact to them? So, so making the connection, so the offline, you know, when a, when a resident has to go to the city office and try to conduct business, they're given the runaround, those sorts of things, but also the online and those communities that are underserved as well. Well, I, I appreciate you uh, bringing uh, this uh, challenge and your experiences with that to uh, the conference to talk to us about it. And uh, also thanks uh, for taking the time to uh, uh, meet with me for this interview and we'll see you when you make your journey to Seattle from Detroit in March. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Joe.